deal with inshallah aziz today is uh, last week we received a call from a brother from afghanistan who asked whether it was permissible to write anything else than the quranic verses or the sayings of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam on ta'weez because we were speaking on the permissibility of ta'weez whether it was allowed to use ta'weez or not and when i mentioned while i mentioned that it was totally permissible to use something else you can write the quranic verses on the ta'weez and also the hadith the sayings of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam but also you can write something else and i gave an example of sayyidina umar ibn al-khattab radiyallahu ta'ala anhu who wrote on a piece of paper some sentences and this was then sent and this was then put in the river nile nile at the same time another hadith which i mentioned this hadith is in Ib uh, ibn majah Ibn Majah, Imam Ibn Majah has narrated this hadith and this hadith uh, is a very beautiful hadith because the narrators of this hadith, the Asma'ul Rijal of this hadith are all very very noble, very very pious people. Let me quote this hadith. First of all, An Abdi Salami, now I'm narrating the chain of narrators. An Abdi Salam Ibn Abi Salih, Abi Salt al Harwi, An Ali Ibn Musa al Ridha, An Abihi. عن جعفر ابن محمد عن أبيه عن علي ابن الحسين عن أبيه عن علي ابن أبي طالب رضي الله رضوان الله تعالى عنهم مجمعين قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم these people which I have now mentioned in front of you these pious noble people from the descendants of the holy prophet صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم they have all they have, they are all narrators of a very beautiful hadith and what is the hadith? The hadith is Holy Prophet ﷺ said, Al Imanu Ma'rifatun Bil Kalb, wa Qawlun Bil Lisan, wa Amalun Bil Arkan. That Iman is something which is has to do with the heart, is the ma'rif of the heart. And wa Qawl Bil Lisan, and Qawl and, and your words have to do with your tongue. And wa Amal, and the practice has to do with Arkan, with the pillars. Not going to the detail in the interpretation of this hadith. What I want to mention is, Qala Abu Salt, Abu Salt al Harwi, who is the Sheikh of Imam Ibn Majah, who is the Sheikh of Imam Ibn Majah, he says, because he is the narrator, he is one of the narrators of this hadith, he says that, Law Kuriya hadha al Isanadu ala Majnoonin la Bara'a. If one was going, if one recites or reads the chain of narrators, the Isanad, the chain of narrators, the names of the pious people who are in this Isanad, in this chain, then what happens is, and if that person is a person who is insane, labara, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give shifa to that person. So from this hadith, which Imam Ibn Majah has mentioned, again, Imam Ibn Majah, we can also understand that on Taweez, Likewise, the Holy Prophet wasallam used to decide Quranic verses and blow upon the parts of the body of his companions which were in pain, which were in distress. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would remove that pain, would remove that uh, distress from the companions of the Prophet wasallam. the same way, the same way, if one recites a pious man, if somebody recites the, chain, the names of these people, it has, according to Imam Ibn Majah, a very... A very strong effect and the effect that Allah will grant shifa to that person the same way we can derive from this we can understand from this that if these people's names are to be written are to be written on a piece of paper then it will have the same effect as it will have an effect when somebody will utter the names of these people the next question which I would like to deal today is also a very important question because last week we discussed this but we couldn't get chance to go into detail and I understand that uh, many viewers are now watching new TV because they want the answer to this question and this question is related to, to the beard the issue of having a beard uh, last week two people two brothers called in and they asked about the the Shari uh, Hasiyat about the legal status of the beard in Islam and I uh, replied to this, and, and inshallah, Aziz, uh, before I just come to this, I would like to remind all the viewers who are watching this program around the whole world, this is your chance, dear viewers. I received many emails, and alhamdulillah, many viewers, they email us. But 
it, we can't choose and select every email, and we can't answer every email on air. So that is why we prefer the viewers who are watching New TV, who are watching my program, Islamic Q&A, if you have a question, then rather than emailing it to us, try to call into the studio, because then, first of all, you will be sure, assured that, inshallah, we will uh, reply to your question, we will answer your question, and the secondly, this will be considered sadaqa jariya. This will be sadaqa jariya because those people who will listen to this answer, to the answer to your question, and they will benefit from this. Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, the ilm, the ilm which is ilmun nafi, the ilm, the knowledge which has benefited people, that is one way, that is one uh, sabab that when you die when you are in your grave, then you will get still the reward of the knowledge which you gave to people, you taught people, and people then received it and they benefited from this. Until people are going to benefit from that knowledge, from that ilm, then you will, in your grave, you will get the reward for that. So this is also Sadaqa Jariya. If you call in with your question, inshallah, Aziz, and people will listen to the answer to that question, and people will benefit, inshallah, when, then what will happen is you will get the reward. Each and every person who, will watch the, who is watching the program, and who is benefiting from, from the answer given to your question, then inshallah, Allah will give you the reward of each and every person. So that is why, try to call into the studio, dear viewers, and uh, inshallah, we will then... Uh, entertain your question. So regarding the beard, issue of the beard, I mentioned last week that because I am a Hanafi, because I am a Hanafi, I follow the school of thought of Imam Azam Abu Hanifa, rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi. The same way my teachers, all of my teachers who I have studied under, Sheikh al-Islam, Dr. Muhammad Tahir al-Qadri, and Mufti Abdul Qayyum Hazarvi, and uh, Pir Nasiruddin, and other various teachers I have studied under, all are from the Hanafi school of thought. So I myself, I am a follower of the Hanafi madhab. So that is why my answer to the question will be an answer based on the Hanafi madhab. Uh, so, according to the Hanif Ahnaf, in the school of thought of Imam Azam Abu Hanifa, uh, the, the legality, as I mentioned last week, of the beard, the beard is, is because Holy Prophet ﷺ said in a hadith, that is hadith mentioned by Sahih al-Bukhari and mentioned by Sahih al-Muslim. And the hadith is that Holy Prophet ﷺ said, grow your beard and trim your mustaches. This is a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, which is muttafaq which is in Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih al-Muslim. In this hadith, there is an amr, there is a command of the Prophet ﷺ, and the command is, grow your beard. Now, when in, in the Hanafi school of thought, there is a command, then it is, um, it, it, it is dalalat, it, it uh, tells us, or it is uh, a reason for, uh, for a wajib, for wujub. So basically, when there is a command, it automatically means that the command which is given is wajib. Holy Prophet ﷺ gave the command, grow your beards. Grow your beard. So from in the light of this command of the Holy Prophet wasallam, which is in Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih al-Muslim, we can derive, we can understand that because this is an Amr, where there is an Amr, then there is a wujub, then it becomes wajib. So it is wajib to keep a beard. However, some Hanafi scholars, some Hanafi scholars have also said that we wouldn't say that it is 